Hello and Merry Christmas. So 41 Christmases ago, back in 1978, I first received the British Star Wars Death Star playset for Christmas and it was a, a momentous occasion. So I'm absolutely delighted today on Christmas Day to be able to show you the restoration in effect of my Death Star and getting it back up to what I believe to be a, a pretty decent collector's standard um, and the journey that it took over the last few months. Um, I've been doing videos many many times over, over these few months just to uh, record my progress as I've got it from well as you'll see it in a minute, up to uh, the finished uh, the finished article. So there we are. So I just thought I'd do this little introduction before the introduction and wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for following and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Hello and welcome to today's video. So at last, here we are. The classic British Palatoy Death Star, perhaps the jewel of many a collection, certainly one of my all-time favourite pieces. And just holding it brings me back to uh, being a, a seven-year-old back in 1978 on Christmas morning and unwrapping this present and being just completely blown away by it. Um, I'm delighted to have this one today. In fact, I've got two now. So... Um, one of them is the boxed one that comes with this and I've also got one which is in need of a bit of TLC and repairing. So the video is going to be in several parts. The first one, we're going to have a look at this one and my other one. We're going to work out which bits are the best, how complete it is, what bits are missing, what potentially needs to be upgraded. Then I'm going to sort out the one that I'm going to keep and I'm going to clean that one myself before sending the other one off to a friend of mine who's going to do a repair job on the old one. Um, then we're going to assemble the Death Star, get it up to speed and see just what it looks like. I'll pull some of the original 12 figures out as well. So we'll, we'll put them in situ and see just how good it looks. Um, and then finally, I'm considering, um, once it has all been tarted up and it's looking good, um, of possibly getting an acrylic case to, just to finish it off. So it's going to be a multi-part video. Um, it could end up, I might release this in several parts or I might just do the whole lot in one and this is the start and over the next month or so we'll see how it comes out at the end and uh, maybe I'll release this one around Christmas so we'll wait and see but that is the plan anyway that's going to be the subject of today's video so sit back relax enjoy and let's get to it Okay, so this is the Death Star, the Palatoy Death Star. Here it is at last. Now, I can't quite believe it, but um, as well as having this boxed one, um, I do also have a loose one, but neither one is perfect. So what I'm going to do in this first part of the video, um, I'm gonna, we're just going to have a look at the state of the, the existing Death Star, the box first, and then the various pieces. I'm going to compare the pieces to see which ones are good, uh, which ones are the best, and which ones are inferior. And I'm going to obviously keep the best pieces, the best examples of each bit, and that will be the basis of the Death Star that I'm going to keep. Um, and then the ones which aren't so good or are in need of repair, well, we've got something special lined up for those. So first of all, then, let's just have a look at the box. Now, you can probably see straight away that there is some um, on the flap here, as well as it being sort of curved, um, there is some, uh, like where it's been taped up historically, there's nothing I can really do about that. However, the curvedness of the box, um, and I might well in try and repair that internally. The actual box itself isn't too bad. It's fairly robust. Um, it, it's just got a little bit of edge wear, um, but it's not too bad. The, the back of the box, well, there's a few bits and pieces that need perhaps sticking down and tidying up a little bit, but basically it's it's all there and it's, uh, it's pretty nice, isn't it? It's such a great, great toy, this. Um, this flap here, not too bad. Um, this has got a bit of ancient tape, which I'm going to carefully peel off. So I'm going to do my own tiny bit of restoration here. I'm a little bit worried about, um, you know, down the bottom there. I think we're going to be all right. I think that's going to, I think this is going to come off okay. As you can see, it's almost coming off there like that. But I'm going to tidy that up and give it all a clean. Basically disassemble the box, flat pack it down, and then following 
what uh, Toy Poloi has done, um, where he um, he sort of gets the box on a flat surface, a bit like this cardboard here. He'll put a towel over it or a sheet and then iron the box. So my plan is with this particular box, because it is it's as good as I'm going to get, let's put it that way. There's no way I'm going to get a better one than this. Um, I'm going to tidy it up, disassemble it, take that tape off. Then I'm going to try and strengthen it and uh, take the ripples out of the end there. Um, and then I'm possibly going to put a bit of like magi tape on the inside there, just to keep that from getting any worse. I'm also considering cutting out some thinnish cardboard, not real thick, but thinnish cardboard to put inside this box to strengthen it from the inside going out. That is my plan. I've done that um, and I've seen other dealers do that in the past um, just to give the boxes a bit more um, robustness. Um, and then I think that'll be really good. And then my ultimate aim, um, if you're in the UK, you've probably heard of a company called GW Acrylic and they actually do a large plastic acrylic box that fits the Palatoy um, Death Star. However, it's quite expensive, um, but I'm thinking of treating myself to one of those um, just once this is done, just to finish it off. And uh, I think it'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, this was certainly my all time favorite toy as a kid, and I just love it. And the fact that I've got one now, it uh, makes me over the moon. So with joy. <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, um, so that's the box. Um, so I'm just going to pause there. I'm going to pull over all the other bits and bobs that I've got to go with it uh, times two, and we'll sort out what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to pass on to a fellow collector. So I'm just going to pause it there. Right then. So this is the famous base of the Death Star. Now, I don't know about you, but when I had this one when I was a kid, I was about eight years old when I had this. This base was just fantastic. I mean, unbelievably cool. I just loved it. I, I do love the way they got that. The picture of the first 12 down there. And they were the only ones I had when I first played on this. The, the second wave, I don't believe had come out then by the time I got mine. But this one, like a lot of this um, Death Star, has at one point been left out in the rain and it's got water damage. Now, a lot of it I think could be um, cleaned up. So you can see like there's a bit of staining here. Um, this could be cleaned, it can be cleaned. There's a lot to be salvaged. The only bit that's sort of damaged on the actual Death Star itself is this bit, this part of the trash compactor where there is some loss, but that I believe could be rescued. Um, and as I said, I've got a duplicate of everything. So. If that's the inferior one, this is the this is the one that I'm going to keep. This is the good one. All right. So this one is is much better condition. So this will be the one I I keep myself. So what I shall do, I shall put the inferior one over here for my friend. And the good one I shall pop at the back over here near the box. So it's like seeing double of everything. So it's a similar situation with this, to be honest. So this is the next piece. So this is the, the better one. And as you know, all the pieces sort of slop together to make the domed shape of the Death Star. Um, so that's the, that's the good one. And even though this is the good one, it has got, like here, a little, little bit of stainage. I don't know if you can... You can see this on the camera. There's a little bit of stainage there. So every single piece of this, I'm going to go over myself. Um, yeah, there's a folded over corner there. I'm going to go over this with a fine tooth comb and get it looking absolutely as good as I possibly can myself. Um, so the cardboard, it is actually a, not only cardboard at the end of the day. Uh, that I'm sure is the good one because this is the same piece again, but this is from the, uh, the sort of the water damaged uh, Death Star. So as I said, the pieces are all there. It's not in too bad condition, that, that piece. So I'm sure uh, my friend is going to be able to sort that out. So let's pop that one to one side. Next thing we've got is the piece with the door. Now, this is one of those pieces that um, traditionally 
Um, when you find the Palatoy Death Star, this is the door that backs onto the trash compactor. And as you can see, this one's actually, actually in quite nice condition. Um, and this is still on the damaged Death Star. So that's one bit that my friend is not going to have to worry about. And in actual fact, that particular piece is not too bad. There's a bit of crease in there, but nothing really to worry about. This is, however, the, the better one. And I'm gonna, this is the one I'm going to be keeping in the main, the main Death Star itself. So we'll keep that one there. And this is the uh, slightly inferior one, but still really nice there. Um, I think he'll be, uh, he'll be happy to have that one. Now this next bit's quite interesting. So this, this piece has got very, very worn, um, unfortunately. So this is the good one. It's got a little bit of a stain there, but generally speaking, is in is in pretty nice condition unfortunately this one is has been in the wars and this one's really suffered so it's got it's it's torn there it's not looking great however i do believe it's salvageable it's all there it just needs it needs a real real job doing on that one but it's possible so uh that's once again one for my one for my friend and i shall keep this one in the main with the main Death Star for me to clean up. The next bit then is one of the moving doors. Now this is quite interesting. I'm a bit torn on this one because they look pretty much the same. This is the one that's come from the water damaged um, Death Star. And you can see a little bit of paper. It's got wet and it's got damp. This is the one from the better Death Star which is obviously the better one. However, unfortunately, this bit has been taped on. Not that you're really going to notice it once the Death Star has been assembled. However, out of the two of them, I'd almost want to keep this part of this one and this part of this one. Um, however, I, I think because of the tearing on the back there, um, and this coming away, I think I'm going to have to keep the one with the tape on for now and keep my eyes peeled for a, a replacement panel because these actual panels, the individual panels do turn up on like eBay and places like that. However, they tend to go for silly money. So, you know, who's to say? Now, this is the dome that goes on the top. So once again, we're seeing everything in double. Now, looking at which one is the best. It's very, there's very little between them, to be honest. They both seem pretty, pretty good. Um, I'd say this one's probably the cleanest one, although I'm obviously going to give it a proper bath, as it were. But that's, I'll keep that one. And I'm going to pop this one to my friend. Next thing we've got is this. So this is, I've only got one of these, and this is the original dome. So you've got your sort of your stormtrooper guy, you see on the box that sits on the top. Um, and then this is the bit that goes underneath. This is an original, uh, very yellowed one, but that's how they've gone over the time. You can get replacement clear plastic ones, but that's the original to keep with that one. Um, here's the booklet, the Palatoy booklet. Sadly, this is the reprint that came with Area 51 magazine. Um, you can tell that because it's got the, uh, the reprint and it's from Jason Joyner at Offworld, the sci-fi store, when he had a shop. Um, I haven't got the original booklet anymore. I thought I did have one, but I haven't. So, you know, that is what it is. But I mean, um, I certainly like the, uh, the this and it is part of it and it came with it. So I'm just going to make a tiny bit of space and then we'll get the rest of it out. Right. So the next bit then we've got is the piece at the top, which is the, uh, the sort of the round bit that uh, fits. So the actual tops fit into these uh, little grooves here. Now, once again, we've got two of them and there's not a lot between the two, to be honest. Um, but I think this one's got slightly, slightly less wear. So that's the one we'll, we'll keep with that one. Now we've got some of the little side panels. So this one, as you can see, is lots of staining and wear. Certainly it needs press it, repressing out and cleaning uh, compared to this one, which is um, in, in much better condition. So. We'll pop that over there and we'll pop this in with the, the spare. Same for this panel here. So we've got the one that's been out and got a bit wet, but it's actually in really not too bad condition, that piece. 
um, and this is a, a like a nice nice one so same with that now this is quite a, a tricky piece this is the sort of the gantry bridge and um, this is the this is the one that's got wet and it is all there but it's dirty it's dirty and needs a real good cleanup so that's the one we'll pop with the uh, the spare set and then this is the uh, this is the the nice one although even this one has a little bit of wear so there's that black spot there I'm going to try and clean that up before I assemble it and a few little bits and bobs that need re-gluing then you've got this is the little plastic escape hatch and this is often missing um, this piece alone on eBay goes for like 40 quid or something which is ridiculous in my opinion um, but here we have two of them. I believe they're both in you know, absolutely fine condition. I don't think any one is better than the other one, to be honest. Perhaps this one is cleaner. So I'll keep the, the cleaner of the two. And I'll send this slightly dirty one off to my friend. And then we're almost there. So now we've got a few bits and pieces. So when I had this as a kid, I knew for a fact that it came with six of these little plastic bases, okay? And these are all original ones. So I have got one, two, three, four, five. There's five there. Um, in my display case of Star Wars figures, which you've seen before, I've actually got um, several figures on Death Star stands. I've got loads of them, in fact, um, because when they used to come into the store, uh, when they used to come into Purple Haze, um, I would always grab them because I knew they'd come from the Death Star. And when I had my original Death Star, there were six of these. So I've got five. I'm going to pull one out from the cabinet and then I'll have the full set of six. Now you need, these are the guns for the turret. These are the X-Wing guns and you only need uh, two. So um, those two look absolutely fine to me. And I'll put these to my friend. Now, the last bit of the puzzle are these um these clips here now these clips are what fit the bits of cardboard together and i believe they come in pairs like that now i'm trying to think how many clips you need is one two three i think you need five pairs as i recall it says one two three four five and then I've got three, three sets for my friend. Um, so the only thing that's missing from the complete package, um, this little plastic bag here, um, this is an original uh, plastic bag that some of the smaller pieces actually came in. Um, and as I recall, when I was a kid, the larger pieces also came in a much bigger plastic bag, a see-through one. And I might try and source one of those just for the sake of um, uh, completeness more than anything. The only thing that's actually missing now from this set is the original instructions. Now I've got a set that I can reprint um, and I did put a post saying I was after an original set of instructions on some of the Facebook groups. And one chap did come back with a really hammered set of instructions for a hundred quid. And I thought, well, I'm not paying that. Um, so uh, if I don't find one in the next few weeks, um, I'm just gonna put in a reprint one just for the time being. I've taken off the, the tape that was at the bottom covering this crease here. So this is not the flap end. This is just like the bottom end. And uh, that had a big thick bit of yellow tape on and it's come off absolutely fine. However, it's left this sort of yellowy 
residue across there. Now I've been doing my research and as I'm sure viewers of this channel are fully aware, there's a great um, toy restorer called Toy Ploy and he has done a video which I shall link to um, in a card um, up above right now. Um, and that shows you how to use lighter fluid and this will dissolve this ancient glue. So it's with an air of a little bit of trepidation that I'm going to get myself a piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to douse it with some of this um, lighter fluid. And uh, we shall see if it does indeed do the trick I would imagine for safety reasons, um, that was why the lighter fluid was rather difficult to get into. So here we are, I've got my kitchen towel. I'm just gonna pour some on and then gingerly dab the box here and just see, see what happens. Now, apparently the lighter fluid will just evaporate but it should also take the glue with it. Okay, not too bad. I didn't put a lot of lighter fluid on, but it does seem to be doing the trick. Let's put a bit more on. I'm just roll it, rubbing it along the edge here, because the other thing that lighter fluid will do is get rid of like unseen dirt and grime and marks fingerprints, that sort of thing. It does take a little bit of time to evaporate once you've applied it. Yeah, it does seem to be taking something off. Let's give it some more. Now, when Dave does this in his videos, he, he says it, it's quite a long process. So I'm not gonna keep you here while I do the entire box, but I thought this is by far the worst bit. So we'll just see how this lighter fluid actually handles it. And uh, I think it's going to be, it already seems a bit smoother, like it's taken some of it off. Certainly better than that horrible yellow, yellow tape that was there beforehand. Yeah, it does seem, giving it a chance to dry. You see it's sort of starting to come back. Well, I don't know if that's done the trick, you know, or not. It's certainly got some dirt off, but I don't know if it's actually got that much of the glue off. So I'm gonna keep at it anyway. I use a, a fresh bit of cloth, kitchen towel, and apply it ever so gingerly again see if we can see if it does start to eat into this glue. I know when Toy ploy has been doing it he actually put, puts the, uh, the lighter fluid straight on so maybe I need to be a bit more liberal with it and just just whack it on. It doesn't seem to be doing the box any harm anyway you know because it just sort of evaporates in air. So that's about as good as I can get it. I've used a bit of a mixture of the uh, lighter fluid and also just some furniture polish and a bit of, uh, well, time consuming uh, uh, rubbing of it down. Um, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's certainly gonna be better than having that horrible tape there. I've also carefully gone over the rest of the surface and um, uh, with, a, with a duster and tried to clean off as much as possible. The next step, is repairing this end flap. So um, I'm obviously not going to be able to replace this bit, but it's very, very bowed. So I'm going to iron it, get it as flat as possible. And then I'm going to try and repair the from the inside. I'm going to use some bit of gummed brown paper. Um, I'm going to repair this edge here inside. And then this box is about as good as I'm going to be able to uh, be able to get it. Okay, so welcome to Jules Burt's Collections, Unboxings and Ironings. Um, so I can't quite believe I'm going to actually attempt to do this, but as you can see on the Death Star box here, it's very much like curled. And um, 
I'd like to flatten it out if possible and take away some of the, uh, you know, just make it a little bit more flat basically. And then I want to repair this, this tear here with some brown gummed tape. I'm going to repair that on the inside and see if I can um, sort these two flaps out as well. So um, that is going to be the point of this. So I've got a tea towel underneath and I'm going to pop another tea towel on top like so. Now I do have, you can see the flap lifting up there. What I want to do is get it as flat as possible. So let's hope that this works. So I've had um, the iron ready and let's just see if this does make any sort of a difference to flattening this box at all. Obviously the last thing I want to do is burn it because it is after all cardboard so let's just see it's very warm that's that's one thing I have got the but it does actually appear it's not immediately it's not so springy but I am slightly concerned about applying too much heat because the last thing I want to do is burn it but that does seem already to have done a bit of good because it's flattened it a bit so I think what I'm going to do is maybe double it up slightly because I want to sort of get this bit down as well so let's see how we should do this maybe like that it's a very delicate job as you can imagine I think that would be quite good so we're going to give this a little try now And that's doubling it up. Once again, I don't want to do it for too long. Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad. I'm going to do the other side now. Get that as flat as I possibly can. Now, once again, this is a technique I've learned from watching Toy Ploy when he had a couple of Micronauts boxes to repair. And he did a very similar process, gin gingerly um, ironing the boxes. Well, that does seem to be an improvement. They do seem to be a bit flatter. Um, as I said, yeah, definitely the curl's gone out of that. That's for certain. I think possibly it's going to need, this is where I'm going to be applying the gummed, the gummed tape. I think I'm going to do this bit again, this flap here, because that should be like that when it's finished. So I'm going to give that one more, this bit, one more thing, one more iron, and then potentially I might do those two side flaps. So let's double it up again and run my iron just along that flap there. See if this makes any difference to that little end bit. And I'm applying quite a lot of pressure here to try and get that nice and flat. Take away the tea towel. It's still got a little bit there. It's definitely better. That much is certain. It's definitely better than what it was. Um, let's have a little look here. Yeah, that is much flatter because it was very, very bowed. I think if I repair this now, I'll be able to get quite a nice little fold on that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I, I really don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to get this bit gummed in next. Okay, the next thing I'm intending to do is to get this piece here 
gummed up because this is on the other side it's um it is torn so this is the only tear on the box in actual fact so what i'm going to do i've got some brown gummed tape this is the sort of tape that's traditionally used by picture framers so we're going to take a bit of this out first of all and what we're aiming to do is get it across the fold I'm just cutting it in half we're going to try and tape up this bit here so from there we're looking to be putting it across there as you can see it doesn't detract too much from the inside of the box simply because it's, it's this brown color and that in actual fact is, is pretty much perfect for the length i need so we'll just give that one more fold now on this side yeah all the bits are in as much of this is in as can be so as flat as we can make it now that's how it's going to go on now the thing is with this gummed paper it can be a little bit toxic in the mouth so what i've done i've got some tissue paper here and i'm just going to use that dipped in some water rather than licking it with my mouth just to get the gummed tape ready to be applied and that should do the trick to make it sticky then there we are so I put plenty of water on now we're going to have a crack at popping this on so that looks about about right yeah that's looking pretty good I think um, the middle is right on the, the fold where it was torn and this is just going to stop that tear getting any worse and hopefully with what we've done with regards ironing the curl out the two things combined should make this end flap quite a bit more rigid than it ever ever was beforehand um, I think we've got that in pretty much as good as we're going to get. So now, oh, there we are. Now I need to, that's quite interesting. So it has, you need to lift that up ever so slightly to do the flaps, but that's okay. That's actually going to give it a little bit more purchase. And then if we just use that. That end is now looking miles better than it did absolutely miles better and obviously that was where the initial tear was and basically it's just not going to get any worse now now i have thought i have got some cardboard inside this now so i have thought about trying to possibly put in a bit more cardboard in but i really don't think it needs it because ultimately this one is going to go into a um GW acrylic acrylic display case and that's going to keep it all nice and tight anyway so there we go mission accomplished okay so the next step and almost the final step of the process um, I've already been through the cardboard and I've tried to fold down all the corners so the next step is I'm just giving each individual piece of cardboard a final once over with my duster try and pick up any little fingerprints bits of dirt things like that just before i go ahead and get the death star assembled and uh, it really is going to be quite fun putting this one together after so many years the pieces to be honest aren't too bad they're not too dirty um, there was just a few bits which had uh, slightly folded over edges and corners and things like that. And I've tried to sort those out as best I can, uh, re-glue re them down with just a little bit of like Pritt stick because it's only cardboard after all, your layers of paper. Um, and that seems to have done the trick. Um, so that's pretty good, to be honest. Um, 
I'm very pleased with the, the general condition of this one. And uh, yeah, as I said, I cannot wait to get it assembled and looking like it did so many years ago. So as soon as I finish going through all these pieces and just clearing up the last like little bits of dirt and splashes and bits of fingerprints and dirt and things like that, then we'll be back to get this one assembled. Okay then, so that's all the pieces cleaned. And let's get this assembled then. So I can't imagine it's going to be too difficult to put together because it is after all only some cardboard. But I do obviously want to do it very, very carefully and gingerly so that I don't damage anything. So here's the base. I do have some uh, reproduced instructions for actually assembling this one. Um, as I said before, um, I have um, I am on the lookout for a set of instructions now because the ones that I've got are just repro and uh, they do seem rather expensive. So if anyone has a spare set that they'd be willing to pass me along, that would be very, very good of them. I am more than happy to uh, to pay, but I don't want to pay a hundred pounds for them, <laughs> which is what I've been offered so far. That's a little bit too, too dear. So, um, you know, a little bit less than that and we might be talking. Okay, so I'd say we're probably about halfway there. Um, the main pieces are in now, um, all the clips are in, and it's starting to take, certainly starting to take shape as, uh, as the Death Star that we, we know. So I think I'm gonna need to pull the camera out even further to get it all in. So certainly not many pieces to do now. just about are so that's looking fantastic so I think what we need now is a few vintage action figures to set this one off so there we go I think it does really come to life once you've got a few of those original 12 action figures in there and boy does that take you back to uh, Christmas 1978 at least it does for me um, assembling this one with my dad and playing it for the first time I had this one because uh, my birthday is the very end of November so um, I used to sort of get one uh, one present very end of November and then I would wait for Christmas for like my main present and I remember that that fantastic year where I had the Death Star and the Cantina playset and I think I had my land speeder for my birthday and uh, some of those original 12 figures. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, here we are, quite literally 41 Christmases later, 
and uh, I finally got my uh, my Death Star back to uh, pretty much how it was uh, all those years ago and uh, I think this truly is one of the most uh, fantastic pieces of anyone's collection. Just fantastic. So we're almost there now. Um, so I'm going to disassemble it now that I've uh, I've had a good uh, a good look at it and a good play, and I've filmed all this. Um, I'm going to get it all boxed back up um, as neatly as I possibly can, and then. I've managed to secure a GW acrylic case, which I think is really going to set off the box absolutely perfectly. So uh, we're going to get that case out. We're going to have a look at it and uh, we're going to get the uh, the box Death Star um, proudly displayed in that acrylic case. So let's just pause the camera there. Right then. So I've uh, very carefully packed the Death Star back into its original box and um, it fits just like a glove. Um, so what you can see here, this big uh, cardboard box is in actual fact the delivery from GW Acrylic. So let's have a little look here. So we've got, got my invoice and then it says, hi Jules, this is uh, from GW Acrylic, it's one of his little flyers. It says, hi Jules, many thanks for your order, much appreciated, Merry Christmas, regards Christian. GWA, GW Acrylic, so that's good of him. So this is, uh, what's this here? There's six little, so this case is designed to have a rear sliding panel. Therefore, therefore please find enclosed self-adhesive clear rubber pads. These are to be used at your discretion on the base of the case to enhance your display. Okay, so we've got those, or we'll have those on standby should we need it because although I'm going to box this one up I'm not going to put it straight out on display yet so let's have a little look here well obviously it's as big as the actual Death Star itself so very very well protected I'm going to have to use a bit of brute force to get this one out <clears throat> but I think it's probably worth keeping these little foam pieces for when the Death Star is entombed within it. So let's uh, take this centre bit off. Brilliant. Okay, that's a bit of tape here. Lovely, because it's an incredible weight, first of all. The actual weight of this is uh, its a real piece, I have to say. So let's get that down on the table. I'm going to clear these other bits of card out of the way for now. So, let's have a look. So, I'm guessing, ah, here we are. Look. So, this is how we get, this is the back of it. So, this is how it's going to slide in and out. Lovely. So, if I slide this out. First of all, like so, and then we'll grab the Death Star. And obviously that's the back, so let's make sure this is all safely tucked in there. We'll slide that into there, Ooh, like that. It fits like a glove. Then we'll slide this bit back on. Ever so carefully. That's to go nice and uh, nice and level there. Here we are, like so. Ah, now he did say, uh, maybe that's upside down. I should have it this way round. So, in actual fact, I'm going to swap this round the other way. Shall I have it round this way? I think is actually better. So then the sliding panel is at the top rather than the bottom. So that would make more sense. So let's slide it like so. There we go. And then how does that look? Wow. That's pretty... Pretty darn impressive, isn't it, that? 
that really, really sets it off. How incredible, of course, so heavy, you wouldn't believe the weight of it. What a, what a fantastic piece that is now. That really is uh, the jewel of many a collection. That looks good from all, all angles. Even the back is just an absolute uh, work of art. How fantastic, isn't it? And I shall keep these little uh, pads for when I'm ready to display this one properly. Because it will certainly, this is so sturdy, we can have other pieces on top of this without any um, worry about damaging the original toy because this is just totally encapsulated and entombed it. A truly, true, truly fantastic toy. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the British Palatoy Death Star. It certainly is an amazing toy. If you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing for regular vintage Star Wars content. Thanks once again for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.